trying to entice Tasmanians to holiday at home. So that's what we're seeing here right now. But we caught up with the farm manager just a short time ago and he said while things are doing well at the moment, the farm only opened on the weekend ahead of the school holidays, um, things are still expected to be down on previous years. And that is because the state's borders are still closed to interstate and international visitors. So having a trans-Tasman bubble to New Zealand has been really welcome news um, for tourism operators here. Um, they, a lot of people are saying that Tassie is very similar to New Zealand, so they're hoping that could entice some New Zealanders over here. But some are still remaining a little hesitant whether we'll actually see um, this bubble come off. We can't see them, Monika, but we can hear those excited uh, school kids on school holidays uh, there. Now, Tasmania hasn't received international passenger flights for years, has it? Is the state ready to accept New Zealanders? Yeah, so even though we do have the Hobart International Airport, we haven't actually received international visitors for a really long time. There's no customs department or no federal police at the airport. So all those sort of issues will need to be worked through before we can accept any international tourists. Now, we asked the state government this morning how it's going with um, working towards this trans-Tasman bubble. Um, the government said its borders are a federal responsibility, well, particularly international borders. So, we're, so we'll have to wait to hear a little bit more around how that will work. Um, but the government says it is willing to work with the federal government to try and attract New Zealanders here as quickly as possible and hopefully reinforcing some of those things we need for an international airport. Monica, thank you. And Tasmania's Parks and Wildlife Services is to track the survivors of a mass whale stranding. Rescuers managed to save 109 pilot whales last week after 470 got stuck in the harbour on the state's west coast in Australia's largest recorded mass stranding. Scientists took tissue samples from the whales that died, which they'll analyse to find out where the pod came from. Parks and Wildlife Service says most of the rescued whales were tagged so scientists can track them. And it's hoped most of the 350 whale carcasses will have been towed out to sea by the end of today. Donald Trump reportedly paid just over $1,000 income tax the year he won the presidency. The New York Times says it's obtained tax return data which shows Mr Trump paid that same amount during his first year in office. It's also reporting the president paid no federal income tax during 10 of the past 15 years. We're under audit. But the story is a total fake. And all of this is this one, you know, we had the same exact questions usually asked by the same people. And that took place four years ago. You remember, this was so well litigated. The newspaper claims he mostly avoided paying tax by reporting heavy losses across his business empire. Donald Trump is the only president in modern times not to make his tax filings public. U.S. Senate will begin hearings in the next two weeks to approve the president's nominee for the Supreme Court vacancy. Donald Trump has picked Amy Coney Barrett to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who died earlier this month. Opinion is divided about the choice of Judge Barrett, who has a deeply religious background. It doesn't matter what the American people want. President Trump sees a chance to fulfill his explicit mission, steal away the vital protections of the ACA from countless families who have come to rely on them for their health, their financial security, and the lives of those they love. A judge in the United States has temporarily suspended President Trump's executive order to block downloads of the video sharing app TikTok. The, the order would have banned Apple and Google from offering the app in the U.S. from midnight. A lawyer for TikTok has argued that the ban was unprecedented and irrational. The government is reviewing a deal to secure the U.S. operations of the Chinese-owned app to address security concerns. The United Nations is calling for calm with fears that a dispute between two former Soviet nations could escalate. There have been fresh clashes between Armenia and Azerbaijan over a disputed territory with both sides reporting casualties. Turkey has promised to help its ally Azerbaijan, while Russia, France and Pope Francis have appealed for restraint. There's concern about strategic pipelines in the region that transport oil and gas to world markets. Tens of thousands of opposition activists have taken to the streets in Belarus for a seventh straight weekend. 
The crowd called for President Alexander Lukashenko to resign over what's widely criticised as a rigged election. Masked police were seen dragging people into vans and using stun grenades and tear gas to disperse crowds. Human rights activists say at least 53 people were detained. The UK government has defended its decision to allow students in England to return to university for the new term, despite several outbreaks of coronavirus on campuses. Thousands of students have had to be confined to their rooms, taking classes online. For the student in need, there's one emergency service that always delivers. Parents have stepped in when supermarket slots ran out. It's just really rough at the moment, and we just, we're just really disheartened by the whole entire situation. But these first-year nursing students say they're already rationing food. People wanted to drop out. We're not getting the right uni experience. No, we're and we're not talking about well. that of going out and yeah. partying. We're just we're not getting the right education. So we've paid so much for our accommodation and for university. People are really, really struggling, especially with like anxiety and obviously de uh, depression, because they've been taught that they're locked up, so basically it's like claustrophobic. Max got a family drop-off on the third day of a fortnight in isolation here. Do you think there might come a time where you need to take him out? Oh, potentially. Potentially, if he... Um... If it was an option and he wanted to and he felt uncomfortable here, then yeah. And while case numbers are low so far, there are concerns about how this is playing out. It's not the law. If enough of you come out, they're not going to do anything. From people in the street and politicians. Students have been done over on their A-levels. They've been done over on Freshers' Week. The government's now threatening to lock them up at university. And very worrying for them, when they graduate, we may be looking at long-term youth unemployment. It's no surprise that students living on top of each other will share the virus, and scientific advisers did predict university spikes. They showed quite clearly that the risk areas were particularly first-year students in halls of residence, as well as face-to-face -face teaching. So this was very predictable, and it was modelled. 9K for what? A question mark over fees paid for courses moving increasingly online. The government says universities are doing what's needed to keep students and communities safe. We're doing that in order to uh, reduce the spread of the disease, enable them to go back at all. And I think it's important for students not to have to give up a year of their life by not going to university. And they are going to university and, and paying the fees accordingly. Of course, this is no start to the new term for these students, and there are likely to be others who suffer similar disruption. But what's the alternative? There are no good options here, really, unless everyone's to be denied even the chance of a university experience this year. And in Newcastle, these are the latest arrivals. I, I still think there'll be plenty going on. It won't be normal, obviously, but I still think I'll have a good time. I'm excited, but quite nervous, just because you don't really know what to expect. And then Sunday morning, I found out that I was positive. And but at the Murano halls of residence in Glasgow, I mean, Tessa it, has I the do, virus. I mean, She's one of around a 1,000 isolating across um, Scotland. The reason why it's spreading out of Murano is because people from other unis, or people who don't even go to uni, were coming to Murano for a night out, which isn't... It was ridiculous. Back in Manchester, the university is sorting food and essentials as cases start to appear in other places. Students had a tough time getting here, and the start of term everywhere looks tricky. Back home now, and childcare centres have reopened in Melbourne as COVID-19 restrictions are eased. Here's Kirsty Lynham, who's director of the Little Acorns Childcare Centre in Melbourne. Hi there, Kirsty. So what sort of day are you having? It's been really good today. Like, it's, um, it's been full on, but it's been good. And how many kids have you welcomed back uh, today compared to numbers before the latest lockdown? Um, 83 today. And before the lockdown uh, set in, how many were you, how many kids did you have then? We had 91 on a daily basis, so we've pretty much opened quite full today. Yeah. Um, it's been good fun. <laughs> and how did you manage during the lockdown itself then? Were you looking after the children of essential workers? Yeah, the second lockdown was um, a lot different to the first. The first lockdown, we probably only had maybe 20 children a day. Um, but this lockdown, we've, you know, we had about 40, 45 on a daily basis. And we just did whatever we had to do to keep the centre going, mm. keep, the safe keep the children safe. Um, that was obviously our number one priority. And, yeah, we managed to, managed to keep going, which was a good thing. 
So it sounds like you're back to normal um, now in terms of numbers, but are there any parents who can't send their children back to you because they've lost their jobs during the lockdown or, or just can't afford uh, the fees for other reasons? Um, we've actually been really lucky. Um, the, the parents that obviously wanted to come back and may have lost their jobs and can't financially afford it, we as a, we as a centre have decided that we were happy to let them come back even if it was just one day a week. Um, we've tried to give them as much advice and as much help about you know everything that they're able to access through Centrelink. Um, we've given them so much help with the whole Centrelink process as well to be able to, you know, change the circumstances or access the, uh, you know, the uh, assistance with the ACCS and everything. So we have tried to help as much as we can, and you know, we've just tried to make it work so that everyone can still attend. What about your staff numbers, Kirsty? Have you had to let people go? No, we've, um, again, we're, we're a very close centre here. We're a family-run business. Um, and we made the family decision that we were just going to do whatever we could as a family just to keep all our staff on. And we've managed to keep them here and they've all, st they've all still been working throughout. And they've all come back today and they're all ready to go. So everyone's been really, really excited about today. And, it's been an amazing, amazing morning with everyone walking in and we had a big celebration with balloons and banners at the front door and all the kids came in all really excited and all the staff were excited. So, no, it's been, it's been a really, really good day. And for the kids themselves and Kirsty, how's it been for them? Because they've had to cope with a lot of change, haven't they? They have. Um, but the way that we've tried to keep everything as, everything as normal as possible for them the children that were attending, we still did Zoom meetings with their friends at home. So they were still having that interaction, which was really important. Um, we were sending out newsletters every week to the parents. We were doing online learning packs with them. So we were, we were trying to give them as much of a experience, whether they're here or at home. We just tried to keep everyone connected and, you know, just all work together. Mm. They sound very well behaved. We, can, we can't really hear them. Are they outside <laughs> or are they in another room? Yeah, they're all behind me. Oh, you, you took precautions. Kirsty Lynham, thank you. No worries, thank you. Time to check the weather now. Here's Nate Byrne. We've got a weak frontal system moving into the southwest at the moment, bringing a little bit of wet weather, the odd storm as well. Further east, though, a series of troughs and some embedded lows are helping to cause some really hot, gusty conditions that are increasing the fire danger. For the rest of the country, things are looking fairly clear, but especially in WA, that fire danger is up. Catastrophic conditions for the North Interior today with some extreme fire danger around that and severe conditions for the Pilbara Coast as well. Total fire bans in force right through that region. Region. We'll see the odd afternoon thunderstorm out of that trough. A bit of wet weather on the way for the southwest corner of the country as well, with that front moving through. But everywhere else, it's looking relatively settled. Do keep an eye, though, on this rain that's moving through WA and the west of South Australia as well, because it will make it into the southeast in the coming days. Then things stay fairly settled until the next front moves into the west this weekend. A fairly fine week ahead for the most part. Certainly the case on Tuesday around the capitals. Brisbane's got another fine one, getting to 24. 21 in Sydney with clear skies there. Canberra starting with some more fog. Should stay above freezing though. 18 degrees for you with a sunny day after that. It's going to be a fine 21 for Melbourne as some warmth returns to the southeast. 18 in Hobart. Adelaide expect some showers. You're getting to 20. And there's a bit of wet weather developing for Perth as well. 21 the top there. While for Darwin, things are staying dry. Another partly cloudy day. It's getting to 34.